we shall launch it into space. Okay. Nice try, GameCube. You'll do better next time. You know what helps me out when I'm powering through some bad or dysfunctional games? If I stop playing them. What helps me recover from that? I will give you a hint. Sonic! It's one of those series where even if you're playing the bad or dysfunctional games, at least you don't go to therapy when you're done. Or maybe that's just me. Since Intellivision Lives was a remake of classic games ported onto the GameCube that basically turned old games into... not games. I truthfully felt kind of bad making fun of it. I mean, classic games are so important to the world of gaming that we live in today. If those fresh-off-the-boat gaming companies hadn't taken a gamble and invested in a market that nobody knew would hold up, we wouldn't have the lifestyle that we do today. Nowadays, pretty much anybody can make a game, without having to worry about if their market's gonna fall apart. And we owe that security to classic game companies such as Nintendo and even Sega. So it's time to pay homage to those games again, but this time actually being able to play them. Sonic Gems and Sonic Mega Collection, both for the Nintendo GameCube. Much like Intellivision Lives, these are just old games put onto new games for consoles like the PlayStation 2 and GameCube. I'm not sure why they made two, though. I mean, they're both ports of old Sonic games put onto the same system, so... Why not just make one? I guess this was the era where most companies and games were turning 15 or 20 years old, as it was the early 2000s. And if you're gonna port some games, why not port all the games? I mean, seriously, the GameCube itself must have like 80% of all Sonic games playable on it. You got the Adventure Game ports, the Port Collection ports, and heck, you can even play Game Boy Advance Sonic games on the GameCube, so it's pretty much all you can eat. Let's check out Sonic Mega Collection first. I don't want to sound like a love at first sight person, but the fact that this game has a collection of all these classic hits that people, even like me, may have played during their childhood, this port collection itself became insanely nostalgic for me. This menu music itself just gets me excited every time I start it up. I guess it would make me more of a love at first listen kind of person, if that's a thing. Ooh, and look, it's Star Wars 2! So on the main menu, you got games, manuals, extras, and options. The games are the heart and soul of this game, so let's check out the extras first, which I guess will be the kidney. Here you can check out comics, pictures, and more. Holy cow, you actually get over 140 comic covers to look at, and even one or two full comics you can read. It's actually pretty darn cool to be able to play all these old games and get to see what the old comics were like too. It's like taking a trip back in time. You also get this music that sounds kind of sad, but intense at the same time while you're watching and listening to these things. I mean, it's catchy, but kind of an odd tune to play. I knew the old times were so sad. It's just a hint of insanity. This is weird music. You also get to look at art from the games, and some cover art too. Oh, is this a greeting card? When did this happen? Where was I when they were selling Sonic Christmas cards? Why does Amy have a cell phone? Okay, on to movies. You can see some intros, game cutscenes and stuff. There's actually no movies here, very deceitful. But you even get an advertisement for Sonic Advance 2. Uh, that's kind of random, I mean, you have to unlock this stuff, keep in mind, so you're working to unlock this clip so that Sega can sell you more games. SOLD! Okay, so let's move on to manuals. This may seem kind of pointless to some people that you can look at the manuals, but you actually get to flip through the full original pages for the games featured in this collection. This is a lot cooler than you would think, though. Those manuals are actually really hard to come by before eBay existed. Very cool extra. Okay, enough of the filler, let's check out the game selection. So in Mega Collection, you get the core games, like Sonic 1 through 3 and Knuckles. You've all seen those before, but you also get a few that you may have forgotten, like Flicky and... Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine. Boy, that sounds thrilling. Let's check it out! Robotnik, what is your face? Okay, so you get a few modes here. And I might suggest skipping Exercise Mode, because we're playing games. Exercise is off the table. Okay, so let's go with Scenario Mode. This guy is excited to play some Mean Bean Machine. Okay, so this game is literally just Dr. Mario. In fact, I think Nintendo could sue Sega for this. The funny thing is that Sega actually made a game called Poyo Pop on the GameCube as well, and it's the exact same game. It's the Dr. Mario formula, and you're playing against a computer. That makes no sense that Sega would first rip off Nintendo, and then go and rip themselves off in the future, but... Oh well, whatever you floats your boat. Okay, we're done here. Oh, no, no, okay, you can't quit. 
It's like in television lives all over again. If you sit at the main menu, you get to see what I guess is a prologue. Oh, hey, it's Robotnik yelling at Scratch and Grounder from the adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog. That's actually kind of neat to see that they're at least in a game. But, Robotnik, are you okay? Jeez, having a heart attack? You look like someone may need to open your throat with a pencil. I'm pretty sure that's CPR. Okay, let's go with Sonic Spinball. I must say, out of all the Sonic games, this one has to have the catchiest intro. Now, most people will go straight to the game, but I am... I probably am most people, but I like to go to options first. Oh, what is this? What is happening to my ear? I'm still kind of deaf from in television, but... Oh, this is terrible. Oh, look at Sonic. He looks like he's slowly dying at trying to keep his composure. Also, why does C do all? So, in short, all the games work good, and you can also unlock more games. I've never done that, even though I've played this game like crazy. According to the interweb, you unlock games depending on how many times you've started the game up, which is really dumb. I mean, like I said, I played this game a lot, but it's not like I started up over and over. Oh well, the unlockable games aren't that great anyways, so let's move on to the Sonic Gems Collection. This game comes with more modern games, like Sonic the Fighters... <laughs> okay, yeah, Sonic the Fighters. Who came up with that? Yeah, what is in a name? Well, I guess letters are, but anyway. And there's Sonic R, both of which deserve a video for themselves. You can also get Sonic CD and some Game Gear games as well. The game even has Tails Sky Patrol and Tails Adventure, pretty much the only two games that are just for Mr. Prower. That was a weird thing to call him. Um, ignore that. Let's check those out first. Okay, did I miss something? Who are these? Is that Sonic the... the bear hog? So you control Tails and he's got this ring attached to his... his butt, and um... You just go forward and it just keeps getting caught on stuff. It's actually kind of hilarious. Okay, I clearly lack the skills to play this game, so let's move on. Let's try Tails Adventure. I actually played this one a lot, and the game lets you save your data with all of them. Something that was lacking in Mega Collection. This game is very different from most Sonic games. The controls are kind of complex, and it's very slow-paced. You get to use lots of gadgets and stuff, and it's overall a pretty fun game. I'd love to see a sequel. You can also go to Tails' house to equip items or do some other stuff. Also, Robot Head Dismantled and Robot Guts. Tails is creepy. Hey, what is... Can't do. Notice I'm pronouncing the O purposely. I have no idea what this is. Much like in television, there's no going back. You're you're literally just stuck here. Like in Mega Collection, you can also check out the manuals and extras, so let's do just that. In extras you get hints, which are really just telling you about easter eggs and secrets in the game, that's about all there is here, but still a cool addition. In museum, you can check out pictures of characters and cover art. You can even move the pictures around! Pointless! Oh, Sonic is late for work? Does he work? Is this canon? Why would he wear a shirt? I'm guessing these are all greeting cards or something again, which is cool, but... Sonic grocery shopping? Cool? Well, that's about all there is for this game, and, okay, yeah, the music just stopped. I didn't edit that, it literally just stops if you sit there, so I guess that's my cue to leave. So those are the games, and I would actually suggest getting both of them, because they actually both have games that are worth getting, without having to spend money on old systems and games. I think it's safe to say that Sonic Gems Collection might be the one you'd want to go with if you have to choose only one, though. All the core games on Sonic Mega Collection, like Sonic 1, 2, 3, Sonic & Knuckles, etc., are pretty much available on any system, such as DS, even the Xbox 360. Whereas games like Sonic R and Sonic CD are much harder to come across. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I hope all those classic games will forgive me for making fun of Intellivision Lives after this video. Until next time, happy holidays, Merry Christmas, have yourself a wonderful day, and I have a question for you. Can you feel the sunshine?